we talked of sex the act now let's talk of sex as the concept and here we have gender so when you say what is the sex of a boy what is the sex of your child what is the sex of this person you are actually talking about gender and this will require you to understand how gender is formed so let's go all the way back all right so now let's let's assume that the sex we just spoke about this act was between a man and a woman and they just conceived okay so the act of sex is over and man and woman conceived so what happened is the man released a sperm and the woman released an ovum the sperm now we have to talk a little bit about chromosomes so in human beings you have 46 chromosomes out of which 44 are non-sex chromosomes and 2 are sex chromosomes 46 and followed by two letters so the two sex chromosomes are x and y you write it as either 46 xx which would make it a female or 46 xy which would make it a male a sperm and an ovum will have only half of this this is called as the haploid so a sperm because it is coming from a man and a man has 46 xy this can get divided in two ways it can be divided as 23 x or 23 y so a sperm can contain either an x chromosome or a y chromosome whereas an ovum coming from a woman who has 46 xx can have only 23 x so a, a, an ovum will contain 23 x now the if a man ejaculates all the sperms can contain either 23x or 23y so if a 23x sperm combines with a 23x ovum which is all ovum will contain 23x then you have you add up these two and you get 46xx which would make it a woman and if you add up 23y with a 23x you get 46xy which will make it a man so this is how basic conception happened sex ho gaya, conception ho gaya. and this will form an embryo an embryo can have either a 46xx or a 46xy like i just described this is where chromosomes decide sex so right at the time of conception you know that the embryo has a chromosomal sex now in a in an embryo with a 46xy the only difference between this and this is the y chromosome right the y chromosome is different between these two otherwise you have be x you have be x now the y chromosome is is what will ultimately lead into male gender so the y chromosome has something called as the sry gene and the sry gene is what leads to male sex there are many many genes so there are some 15 to no i think there are 30 40 genes that all come together to create the male sex but the one of the first ones that was identified and one of the most important ones was this sry gene and around 40 days after conception so if you conceive today around 40 days later this embryo will develop the first signs of testes 
and this happens because of the SRY gene and once the testes is formed the testes will start releasing hormones which are testosterone and an other interesting hormone called AMH now what is AMH AMH is called as anti malarian hormone in an embryo so if an embryo is developing if you think that okay if this is an embryo if this is eventually going to be the head and this is going to be the body and the legs and all will come here there is something in this area called as the urogenital ridge which is what is ultimately going to form the whole urinary tract and the genital tract now in this area there are two ducts so like there are two uh, small little knobs for example one of them is called as the mullerian duct and one of them is called as the wolfian duct and this is important because the wolfian duct is what causes all your male sexual organs and the mullerian duct is what causes your female sexual organs like your uterus and fallopian tube and vagina so now you can understand that when the testes releases testosterone that's great the male uh, body will require testosterone to do a lot of things but it also releases a hormone called amh which is anti malarian hormone because even this embryo which has a y chromosome which has the testes still has this malarian duct and you can't allow that to remain there because then it will also develop the uterus and fallopian tube and vagina which now this male embryo doesn't need so what this amh or what this anti malarian hormone does is it will go to the malarian duct and get rid of it so now all that is left in the embryo is the testes testosterone and the wolfian duct which will then go on to form all the male section organs so the penis the scrotum all of this will form one after the other now for some reason if there is no amh then your malarian duct will not go away and so you can have both you can have the male sexual organs and you can have the female sexual organs just because your malarian duct malaria, anti malarian hormone isn't working properly suppose it was a 46 xx chromosome so then that means there is no y chromosome that means there is no sry gene and so this embryo will go on to form an ovary so 46 xx um just for completion there is a gene called as dax1 which will then go on to form the ovary and it will act on the malarian duct and it will form uterus fallopian tube and vagina so this will eventually go on to form the female of the species what is sex what is sex of a child it's the first question you ask when a child is born ladka ki ladki what is the sex you've already seen you can say do you mean the chromosomal sex because chromosomal sex would mean it is either 46xx or 46xy you could say are you talking of gonadal sex because gonadal sex means uh does the child have testes or ovary because the first 40 days that that embryo doesn't have sex doesn't have gonadal sex it has chromosomal sex but for the first 40 days the embryo has bipotential because that there are both the ducts present both mullerian duct is there and wolfian duct is there so for the first 40 days the child could be anything chromosomally yes one of the two but gonadal sex could be either one after 40 days there is one of the two there is either the testes or the ovary 
then what happens the testes and or the ovary will release the hormones so testosterone estrogen and this will then go on to cause your what is called as secondary sexual characteristics and this is something that happens from the fetus all the way to puberty so your secondary sexual characteristics right from the onset could mean your genital organs like in males the penis the scrotum and in females vagina labia all the all the genital structures are happening because of the hormones which are happening because of the gonadal uh, structures which are happening because of the chromosome so here you can ask another question and by the way these hormones will not stop working at birth so even later testosterone still has a role to play because in males it will form a uh, more height it could form more muscle it could form a deeper voice in females eventually it will go on to form breasts and it will this this is all just in the body even in the brain the testosterone and estrogen will act so in your gonads it will act much earlier so in your first trimester so in the first three months but after that the testosterone if it is a boy then testes will act cause testosterone which will act on the brain and it will cause all types of changes in the brain and if there is no testosterone then accordingly the brain will evolve into a more female phenotype into a more female brain so that means that there is a third question that you can ask when somebody asks what is the sex of the child do you mean phenotypic sex what does phenotypic mean there are two words one is genotype genotype meaning the gene and one is phenotype phenotype meaning all the things that you can see which is as a result of the gene so here you can ask do you mean phenotypic sex because you can't see the testes and the ovaries but you can see that there is a there are external genitalia so there is a penis there is a scrotum so then you pick up the child you see that you say okay this is a boy that is a phenotypic sex you do an ultrasound if you see that there is a, a uterus inside if there are ovaries inside then that is phenotypically female now these are all secondary sexual characteristics and finally the child grows up so till now that child has no say in it the child was initially it was just say suppose we are talking about a, a chromosomal male 46xy and a gonadal male so that means that he has testes and a hormonal male so that means that there is testosterone and a phenotypic male so that means that there is the penis and there is a deep voice and all the secondary sexual characteristics that are associated with male at some point that child will grow up so at the age of one two three four at some point the child develops a sense of identity and this is a tricky one because identity can be formed as early as less than one year but it is something that constantly goes it's constantly evolving and at some point that child will learn to identify with a particular sex with a particular gender and this is called gender identity if you enjoyed learning neuroscience of sexuality then do like the video subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click that bell icon so that you can get a notification the next time I upload a video. Thank you.